Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to review the Microsoft Surface Book 2. First of all, special thanks to Microsoft Singapore for providing me with not just one review unit, but two. I have the 15 inch model as well as the 13.5 inch model here. Now my review will be from the perspective of a content creator, somebody who uses computers to create visual content for blogging, editing photos, videos, creating artworks for graphic design purposes. So I'm going to talk about all the workflows and how the Surface Book 2, how good it is at handling all those workflow. My review as usual is going to be a bit long because there is a lot to talk about. If you want to save some time, you can check out my text review. The link is in the video description below. The content in the text review and in this video review is exactly the same. And if I have any updates to my video review, it will all go to the text review. All right, so let's talk about the design first. This is the 13.5 inch model and this is the 15 inch model. The build quality is excellent. The metal that they are using is some magnesium alloy. It feels very sturdy, very solid. There is a matte texture on it and the touch, it feels a bit warmer compared to aluminum metal. In terms of size difference, this 13.5 inch is about I say one centimeter smaller on both sides compared to the 15 inch model and maybe a bit uh, smaller at the top and bottom. If you are considering the size like is 15 inch going to be an upgrade, is the larger size going to be better for working? Well, I would say that the difference between a 15 inch screen size and a 13.5 inch screen size is not that significant. They both look big enough at least for me. So let's um, open this up and take a look at the screen. So the main selling point of the Surface Book 2 really comes down to the ability to detach the screen. They have one special button here just for detaching the screen. And once you press that button, the screen will tell you that it's ready to detach and you can just pull it off. Depending on the work that you are doing, you may or may not be able to detach the screen because if the computer is using some resources from the keyboard, for example, if it's using the graphics card in the keyboard, it may tell you that you are not able to detach the screen. And in that case, you have to close the program or save the work that you do and then try and press the detach button again and hopefully it can um, go into detach mode. Most of the time, I do not have any problems detaching the tablet. For example, right now I'm running Adobe Lightroom. I have Affinity Designer open as well as a file that is open. When I press the detach button, I have no problem pulling off the tablet. The main selling point of the Surface Book 2 for me really comes down to the ability to detach the screen to use the screen as a tablet. So this is incredibly convenient if you want to use the tablet for writing, for drawing, for editing photos for long periods of time because this is just a much more comfortable form factor to work with. So right now I am actually putting the tablet flat on my table it's a bit uncomfortable for me to sort of bend over and um, do my editing because it's flat on the table. So I need to get some sort of laptop stand. This tablet, it doesn't have a stand like the Surface Pro. So I need something to prop it up at an angle so that it's much more comfortable for me to work with. Now you can sort of create an angle just by flipping the screen around like this and put it back to the keyboard so that it will attach again and then you can flip it down. So it looks something like this and now there is a slight angle to work on. But again, this angle is not as um, tilted as I want it to be. I prefer something like this a bit uh, higher up. For illustrators and digital artists, it is incredibly convenient to be able to draw directly on the screen and save the file into the system directly. For example, right now I am doing a page layout. So I am drafting out some um, designs for the page layout. I can mark out the different areas, the content, Basically, um, just do some very quick layout to show my click. And I can do different variations of the layout. So right now I'm going to 
create a new layer and I can start over again just to brainstorm some ideas that may or may not work. So this is incredibly convenient and saves me a lot of time because I can definitely draw on paper and then I will have to scan it in and after that I will just email my colleague but right now I'm drawing straight into the system I'll save it and send it to my colleague I do not need to scan it anymore so this saves me a lot of time especially if I'm doing a lot of drafts if you draw comics you can draw your drafts you can plan your panels directly onto the screen it saves a lot of time again and after you are done drawing the drafts you can just start inking straight away there is no um, scanning required it's really quite intuitive to just draw straight onto the scene you can just see uh, what you are drawing straight away and you can see whether or not the panel works at a glance and this is a touch screen so you can zoom you can rotate you can pan and depending on the software that you use the responsiveness the lag um, it may vary for example this is Medibank Paint Pro when I when I zoom and pan there is some slight lag with certain other software for example um, let's go to Affinity Designer this is touch enable as well so right now I can zoom much smoother so performance will depend on the app that you use the screen supports Microsoft Surface Pen but this stylus this is not included with the Surface Book 2 so you have to buy this separately and it costs an additional 99 US dollar but there are actually surface pen alternatives out there that are selling for less than half the price so you may consider getting those the performance of the surface pen on this is excellent it's very accurate there is very little parallax because the glass surface is very close to the actual screen itself pressure sensitivity works really well and also palm rejection is almost flawless so right now I'm actually resting my palm on the screen and drawing at the same time I am panning around I'm moving zooming in and out there is none of the diagonal jitter problem that is so common with other styluses and tablets so right now I am drawing a diagonal line as slowly as I can to see if there is any jitter and I am able to draw this line very straight so the stylus and the tablet when it comes to drawing it's really accurate pressure sensitivity works really well the thin to a thick transition is very smooth how well the stroke uh, will appear really comes down to the app that you use for example with certain apps uh, you can get the strokes to taper really gradually but with certain apps the strokes they may taper quite abruptly so it really comes down to the app that you use it's a really straightforward way to working on comics you can just draw and color directly one important thing to take note of is when you are working in tablet mode either with the tablet attached to the keyboard or with it um, detached from the keyboard there is no um, access to keyboard shortcuts because this keyboard is not connected wirelessly to the tablet personally for me I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts because it's just more productive and it saves me a lot of time so when I'm using this in tablet mode I have to use an external keyboard and this is the one that I bring around with me everywhere so if I need to use this in tablet mode I have to bring this keyboard around Hopefully Microsoft can uh, find some way to build in connectivity, um, Bluetooth connectivity of this keyboard here to the tablet. This would be an amazing feature. But as of right now, when I'm using graphic apps, I have to use this keyboard. The resolution on both screens are very high on the 13.5 inch screen. This is 3000 by 2000 pixels on the 15 inch screen. This is 3240 by 2160 pixels 
In terms of the physical size difference, for me, um, the difference is not that significant. Even the difference in resolution, it's not that significant um, to me. I can work on both screens very comfortably. I'm going to show you the difference between the resolution of these um, two screens. So I'm going to zoom in at 100%, click here. So this is now zoom in at 100%. And it's really con convenient for me to just pan around using the finger gestures. All right, let me just click this. So now it's at one to one, it's at 100%. So because there is more resolution on the 15 inch model, I can see more of the photo. For example, this is a photo of six pens. I can see five out of the six pens at 100% zoom. But on the 13 inch model, I can only see four out of the six pans at 100% zoom. You may ask, um, is it really that important to see uh, more of the photo? Well, if you can see more of the photo, you don't have to pan as much. So if I'm working on this photo, I don't have to pan as much. But if I'm working on this photo on this smaller screen, if I need to um, look around, look at more of the photo, I have to pan around more. It's a very um, slight difference. You can definitely use the Surface Book 2 for photo editing. The color accuracy of the screens is actually quite good. It supports up to 94% sRGB and 73% Adobe RGB. Color accuracy is quite decent, although personally for the type of work that I do, I would always need to connect the screen to an external monitor to check colors because um, it's just what I do because I value color accuracy. But for normal graphic design purposes, if you are editing photos, videos, um, the colors on these screens, they look um, more than good enough. And the brightness is also quite good. I'm not sure if my camera can capture the brightness um, properly, but the brightness is quite adequate and the viewing angles are great. You can tilt the tablet in different angles and the colors, they do not shift as much. The only thing that uh, bothers me slightly is um, the reflective screen, but nowadays most screens, they are reflective. So that's just the way it is. The processors on the Surface Book 2 is more than sufficient for basic graphic design work. If you want to do photo editing, you can do so. It's a bit slower compared to other systems that I've used when it comes to photo editing, but it's still sufficient. When it comes to video editing, the maximum resolution I would recommend would be 1080p. I do not recommend creating 4K videos on these devices because they are not that powerful. You can certainly do so, but it's going to take a very long time for the 4K video to render. Now for the 13.5 inch model, you can choose either to get it with the Core i5 dual core processor, or you can get it with the i7 quad core processor. For the 15 inch model, it's only available with the quad core processors. Now just for comparison purposes, I tried to export 100 raw photos with this model. This is the 13.5 inch with dual core 2.6 gigahertz. And each photo is about 17 megabytes. So I took around close to nine minutes to export 100 raw photos. With the quad core 1.9 gigahertz on this 15 inch, it took about four minutes, which is not too bad. Having quad core processors would help when you are doing a lot of processor intensive tasks. With photo editing, it helps with video editing. It's going to help even further. Now I'm going to um, open up a 2D graphics file to show you the performance. I'm using the dual core 2.6 gigahertz Surface Book 2 here. And this app that I'm using, this is Affinity Photo. I have just opened up a 900 megabyte file. It took a bit longer than I expected. The SSD storage on the Surface Book 2 is fast, but it's not as fast compared to other systems that I've used but it's not frustratingly slow. Apps still open up quite fast. When you boot up Windows, it's very fast. Anyway, this is a 
very large file, 120 by 60 centimeters at 300 dpi. I can pinch and zoom very quickly. There is no lag whatsoever, even on a dual core processor. I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to change the color of the greens here just to let you see how fast the system would respond when it comes to making adjustments like this. If it's going to be instantaneous or is there going to be some lag? So the adjustment is almost instant. I can see some screen redraw as in when I do the adjustment very quickly, I can see the screen drawing rectangular blocks until the colors are matched, but it is still quite instant for me. So this is more than satisfactory for me. So even the slower Surface Book 2, it's quite a capable and fast machine. Battery life for the tablet alone is about five hours. When you connect it to the keyboard, it can go from seven to 10 hours. Battery life really depends on the app that you use. If you use processor intensive tasks, if you're editing videos and exporting videos, obviously it's going to take a toll on the battery life. But even so, the battery life so far, from my experience, it has been quite good. Definitely much better compared to the previous generation Surface products. Whenever I look at the battery bar, I'm always I'm quite amazed at how much battery life is left. So battery life is definitely not something that I would worry about. Did I mention that the keys on the keyboard are really wonderful to type on? They have very nice feedback. The travel is good. The build quality is solid and it's backlit. The overall experience, the overall typing experience is just wonderful with this um, keyboard. The only thing to take note of is um, with this particular keyboard, there is no control key on the right side here. Instead of the control button, they have this button. I use the control key on the right side all the time, so the lack of one really frustrates me. For example, if I am using a stylus and a mouse, which I do like all of the time and I'm using Photoshop I cannot control angle brackets to increase or decrease the font size I cannot control O to open I cannot control L to bring up the levels palette um, and there are just so many shortcuts around this area that I cannot do just because there is no control button here so I'm not sure why they included this which I think it's not that important it's not a very useful button ports on the Surface Book 2. On the left side, we have two full-size USB 3 ports and one SD card reader. I use these ports all the time, every day, almost every hour. I have scanners, I have cameras, my phone, my external hard drive, USB thumb drive, they all use these ports. And this SD card reader really is so convenient. I use this almost every hour hour because I take a lot of photos, I make a lot of videos, I need to import the files very frequently and having this built into the computer, this is incredibly convenient for me. On the other side, we have one USB Type-C. This is not Thunderbolt 3, so you cannot connect an external graphics card to the system to use the extra graphics power. This is um, just for transferring data. And if you need to connect to an external monitor, then you need to use this port. In the previous generation, they have the mini display port, but they have replaced that with this USB Type-C. Personally for me, I prefer the mini display port because having this port here means I would have to get a USB Type-C to a mini display port adapter. And this port here, this is the power charging port. And while we are looking at the side, you can see just how thick this is. This screen here is quite thick because this is the tablet and this is as thick as the keyboard area and both of this is as thick as the hinge here. When you close the screen, there is also this gap here and if you look through the gap, you can see the keys inside. 
Let me just open up the screen to let you see the angle of the hinge. So this is about 45 degrees. It's a good angle to work with. And here at the back, these are vents for the fan, for the hot air to come out. The 3.5 mm audio jack is actually on the tablet. So if you want to listen to music while working, you have to connect your headphones here. It looks a bit weird. I wish that there is another extra audio jack here. Before I talk about the pricing, I want to show you the battery life, 89%. That's very good for almost two hours worth of work. And the battery life is divided into two. For battery one, which is the battery on the tablet, it's at 61%. And on battery two, it's at 100%. I did not use the keyboard or the graphics card that much, so it still remains at 100%. So the battery life is great. All right, let's take a look at the price. This is the comparison table for the different configuration options. You can find this table on Wikipedia. These are the official retail price. So for the dual core 13.5 inch model, it starts at $1,200 and then it jumps to $1,500 for the model with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Speaking of storage, this is the actual amount of storage in real life after formatting. So with the 128 gigs model, you're actually going to get 119 gigs before installing Windows, before installing all the graphic apps. So with the 256 gig storage, uh, you are going to get 238 gigs. With the 512, you get 476. And after you install Windows, which may take about 12 gigs, gigs and then after you install the graphic apps maybe another five six seven eight gigs um, with the 128 gigs model you are probably going to be left with only 98 gigs of usable storage with this 256 you are probably going to be left with 218 gigs of actual storage because of the storage size, I definitely do not recommend getting the 128 gig storage model. So for graphic design purposes, the minimum specifications I would recommend would be 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. So for the 13.5 inch model, you can choose between the dual core or the quad core. If you do a lot of video work, if time is of a concern to you, you edit a lot of photos, a lot of videos, then definitely spend the extra money to get a quad core. But it's uh, quite a jump from the dual core to quad core. It's a $500 uh, jump. You don't just get the extra cores, you also get better graphics card. But graphics card is actually not that necessary when it comes to graphic design work. You can still do, um, you can still get decent performance with the Intel HD uh, 620. So earlier on in the video, when I showed you the 900 megabyte file, I was panning, zooming, and also doing some adjustments. All the edits, they happen almost instantaneously, and that was done on the dual core 2.6 with Intel HD 620. So even at this uh, configuration, the performance is still considered quite good. Now, if you do need uh, extra processing power then you can go for the quad core with the quad core processors you also get dedicated graphics card so for the 13.5 inch surface book 2 you can get the nvidia geforce gtx 1050 for the 15 inch model that is the gtx 1060 personally for me i do not play games so having proper graphics card for me is not crucial it's not that important Having proper graphics card nowadays is not that important for graphic design because the performance of integrated graphics is actually very decent as you can see earlier in the video. If you use 3D software, if you model high polygon scenes with lots of textures, maybe the graphic card will help. But when, you come, when it comes to rendering that scene, the bottleneck is going to be on the processor because this is a quad core 1.9 gigahertz. This is not a very powerful or fast processor. It's going to take a long time to render any scene. 
The prices for all the configuration is a bit high in my opinion, but if you really need the ability to use this in tablet mode, then it might still be worth your money. When I first saw the size of the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, I thought to myself, wow, that's a huge screen. And now we have a 15 inch screen. This is humongous. And for a tablet like this, it is quite lightweight, much lighter than I expected. So when I hold it like this, it's, it's so light, it's quite unbelievable. The 15 inch model, this weighs about 1.9 kg. It's a bit heavy and because of the design, it's a bit clunky, but it's clunky for all the right reasons because the battery life is really good. The smaller 13.5 inch Surface Book 2 weighs 1.53 kg. So which model should you get? Should you get the smaller one or should you get a 15 inch? Well, the screen size of both, um, the difference between the screen size is not that significant. So if you have limited budget, then you can consider the 13.5 inch model. If you do a lot of photo and video editing, you can choose to equip this model with the quad core processor, but that's a US $500 jump, which is quite a lot in my opinion, but you do get that improvement in performance and you can save a lot more time. All right, so that's all for my review today. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If I have any updates to my review, I will put all those uh, updates in my text review. I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.